are now going to start our annual Cedar Grove Wave Ceremony. I'd like to thank Mrs. Dye, Mr. Splendoria, Mrs. Zachera, Mrs. Mega, Mr. Grosso for joining us today. And a very special thank you to Mr. Schoner and the many volunteers who put this beautiful memorial together. Due to the global pandemic's unfortunate circumstances, we cannot honor the lives lost in our usual manner, but nevertheless, we will persist and remember our country's heroes in our new normal. On September 11, 2001, it was a gorgeous late summer morning with bright blue skies and perfect weather unknown to the nation that this day would live on in infamy. Most teachers can place precisely when and where they were when they heard the horrid news. However, none of us students were born. This does not mean we can turn our backs on this moment in history. We should be asking questions, learning about the impact this one day had on our country's history, and honoring the fallen. This morning, we pause our hectic schedules to remember the men and women who lost their lives at the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the passengers and crew aboard United Flight 93. Today, we honor the 2,977 lives lost. Two of those lives were members of the Cedar Grove community. I would like to have a moment of silence to acknowledge the lives of Jack Eichler and Norman Rossenow. Sadly, the repercussions of 9-11 still affect us today. Many individuals struggle with both mental and physical health issues. First responders and survivors are being diagnosed with cancers caused by toxic fumes. More than 2,000 additional deaths have been caused due to 9-11 related illnesses. Today, Cedar Grove shows their support for these heroes, honors the lives that were lost, and vows that we will never forget. Jack Eichler, after retiring as executive director of the Wall Street Law Firm, of Cadwallader, Wickersham, and Taft in 1994, Jack Eichler sought excuses to make the trip back to Manhattan from his Cedar Grove home. On September 11th, Mr. Eichler was to meet his investment counselor, David Brady, for an 8.45 breakfast at Windows on the World. Afterwards, he planned a full day in the city. Neither he nor Brady, a Merrill Lynch first vice president, would make it home again. John Jack Ernst Eichler was born and raised in Bloomfield. After high school in 1951, he was drafted into the U.S. Air Force during the Korean War and was stationed in Greenland. He met Peggy Metters after his discharge in 1954 and the couple married in 1956. Two years later, he graduated from Uppsala College and began working at PSENG. He came to head the company's Equal, equal Employment Opportunity Department. 
At night, he earned a graduate business degree from New York University. In 1977, he left PSCNG to manage the business side of Cadwalder. Once Mr. Eichler retired in 1994, he could be found on the tennis court up to five times a week, fitting matches in between golf, squash, and working out. Norman Ross now, 39, was working as a senior vice president for Aon Corporations on the 105th floor of the South Tower. He grew up in North Caldwell and graduated from West Essex Regional High School and Syracuse University, where he majored in business. He celebrated his 10-year anniversary at Aon in June of 2001. Susan Rossnow, Mr. Rossnow's wife, who is joining us today, described how her husband loved his job and was dedicated to doing good work. He got along well with people and worked to provide insurance for television shows on particular channels that were represented by his company. Mr. Ross now enjoyed golf and playing at the Greenbrook Country Club. He also loved hiking, camping, and scuba diving. We now would like to go through a timeline of, timeline of events from the morning of September 11, 2001. 7.59 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 with 92 people aboard departs Boston for Los Angeles. 8.14 a.m., United Airlines Flight 175 with 65 people aboard departs Boston for Los Angeles. 8.20 a.m., American Airlines Flight 77 with 77 people aboard departs Washington, D.C. for Los Angeles. 8.41 a.m., United Airlines Flight 93 with 44 people aboard leaves north for Los Angeles. 8.46 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 crashes into floors 93 to 99 of the World Trade Center's North Tower. 8.47 a.m., emergency medical services are mobilized. 8.50 a.m., President George W. Bush, while visiting an elementary school in Florida, is informed that a plane has hit the World Trade Center. 9.03 a.m., United Airlines Flight 175 crashes into floors 75 to 85 of the World Trade Center South Tower. 9.08 a.m., the FAA bans all flight departures to New York City and through the city's airspace. 9.21 a.m., all the bridges and tunnels in the New York City area are closed. 9.31 a.m. President Bush calls the events in the New York City an apparent terrorist attack on our country. 9.37 a.m. American Airlines Flight 77 crashes into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. 9.42 a.m. For the first time in history, the FAA grounds all flights over or bound for the continental United States. 9.59 a.m., South Tower of the World Trade Center collapses. 10.03 a.m., United Airlines Flight 93 clashes in a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, missing Washington, D.C. target. 10.28 a.m., North Tower of World Trade Center collapses. 11 a.m., Mayor Rudolph Giuliani calls for the evacuation of Lower Manhattan. 2.51 p.m., the U.S. Navy dispatches missile destroyers to New York City and Washington, D.C. 5.20 p.m., the 47-story building, 7 World Trade Center, collapses. 8.30 p.m., President Bush addresses the nation calling the attack evil, despicable acts of terror and declaring that America, its friends and allies would stand together to win the war against terrorism. 
let's all take a moment of silence to honor and remember those who lost their lives. this morning to commemorate these fallen heroes. Once again, I would like to thank you all for coming. That concludes our annual Cedar Grove Wave Ceremony. Thank you.